Peak Performance Coach AJ Madden here. Today we will cover principle number five. Live faster, Parkinson's law. And this is from our seven principles of time mastery from 1% Warrior Leadership available on Amazon and my website, coachajmadden.com. Let's jump into principle number five, live faster. Here's a quote from Craig Ballantyne. Success loves speed, delay kills dreams. <clears throat> Having a healthy sense of urgency is one of the greatest competitive advantages in leadership and in life. Just that sense of natural sense of urgency, because it costs nothing for an organization to have a sense of urgency, to have that uh, live faster mentality and to follow Parkinson's law. And let's let's talk about the definition of Parkinson's law, and it is this, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. <clears throat> Essentially, this means that the amount of time that one has to perform a task is the amount of time it will take to complete the task. Here's a quote from Tim Ferriss, and actually, this is according to Tim Ferriss. The quote is from Peter Thiel, and this is one of my favorite quotes of all time. If you have a 10-year plan to get somewhere, why can't you get there in six months? I'll say that again. If you have a 10-year plan to get somewhere, why can't you get there in six months? And Peter Thiel is one of the founders of PayPal, billionaire investor, billionaire entrepreneur. Peter understands the value of time and he understands folding time also. And that is a Parkinson's Law question right there. 10-year plan, six months. And I applied this type of thinking, this Parkinson's Law 10-year plan and six months type of thinking to everything I do, to the clients that I work with and whatever challenge they're facing or goal they have. And of course, in my own life, in my own business, and in my own leadership, how can we go faster? How can we live faster? How can we eliminate the inessential? How can we say no to 99 out of 100 things? Practice the power of no. <clears throat> how do we practice the power of one and identify that one thing? That helps us to live faster. That's a really important tool in terms of living faster is to keep a narrow focus and focus on what's important and throw everything else out. The Peter Thiel's question forces us to think differently about goals and challenges and problems. And it forces us to focus on the absolute essential things that would get us closer to our goal. And it also forces us to think much, much, much bigger thinking 10 times bigger, 20 times bigger. Because again, we only have, we all have the same amount of hours in the day. A billionaire or a world champion athlete or someone who achieves elite level success, they have the same amount of hours in the day as we do. They don't have a thousand times the IQ or the talent that we have. What they understand is how to maximize their time and Parkinson's Law Live Faster, and the other six laws are essentially a blueprint, a very simple blueprint for us to maximize that time and get the most done, to leverage our energy, our strengths, to leverage other people's knowledge, to leverage narrow focus and other principles of success to our advantage over and over and over again and maximize every second. I have a saying that I use and I live by and I use it with clients, which is called brief, bright, and back to the future. Brief, bright, and back to the future. And that is this. This relates to communication in terms of conversation, text message, email, meetings. How can we make sure that we are brief, bright, and back to the future? And I'll explain each one of those three one by one, starting with brief. Brief is short in communication, short and to the point, focused, simple. This applies to conversation. I challenge people, leaders, not to speak for more than 30 seconds. And if you're over 60 seconds, that's pushing it. There are exceptions to this, but as a general rule, speaking in no more than 30 second clips, because oftentimes you lose people after 30 seconds anyway. And number two, why not say it in 30 seconds? If you can say it in three minutes, why not try to say it in 30 seconds and get to that point where we are maximizing every second and we are blocking off only the necessary time it takes 
to get something done. So brief in terms of text message, a few words or one sentence or less. Brief in terms of an email, a few words, a sentence, at the most a few sentences. Elon Musk, there's a great story in Ashley Vance's biography of Musk about how he, this gentleman worked for months and months and months on this project, sent it to Elon when he was completed, when the project was completed. And it was a very important project. The gentleman put a lot of work into it and wrote this long email to explain the work. And Elon Musk re replied with one word, okay, that was it. That is living faster right there. That is maximizing every second because all it wasn't a, a long reply was not necessary. Okay, that was all that was necessary at that time. And I imagine those two had a conversation outside of that, or maybe they didn't, but all, less is more. How can I simplify? How can I live faster? How can I be brief and bright and back to the future? The first one being brief here. Brief in terms of meetings. If you have an hour-long meeting, why can't you do it in 15 minutes? If you have a 15-minute meeting, why can't we do it in five? That just continuous thinking, what a competitive advantage that is. It doesn't cost anything for us to eliminate wasteful meetings and wasteful time spent because everyone who sits in that meeting is getting paid. They're getting paid to do something. And if they're sitting there in a meeting for three hours that could have taken 30 minutes, you're paying everyone who's sitting there essentially to waste time. This adds up exponent. The bigger the organization, the more this adds up. And it is a function of, it's really a function of wasted time. So even if you're a small organization, you're still wasting a ton of time by having people sit in a meeting where it's just people either pontificating or talking about things that aren't relevant or we're focusing on trivial issues. That's actually called the Parkinson's Law of Triviality. Not to be confused with Parkinson's Law, which is essentially a task takes as amount of, the amount of time you allot to it. Parkinson's law of triviality is most organizations fo focus on things that aren't important. They focus on the trivial things versus the big things, the one or two elephant-sized problems that everyone, almost everyone knows about and no one wants to talk about. That's where most organizations sit. But if you practice this type of mentality where you're just continuously focusing on the important things and not spending hours on trivial things, because emotionally we want to avoid the hard topics or difficult things or hard decisions. This is such a competitive advantage. I can't overstate how much a speed, sense of urgency, and understanding Parkinson's law is a competitive advantage. Elon Musk practices it. Steve Jobs practiced it. I imagine that anyone who's achieved elite world-class success has practiced Parkinson's law in some form or fashion. I think it'd be very hard to find an exception to that. So success leaves clues. There's your clue right there. Let's talk about bright. So we covered brief, which is short to the point, quick, only what is necessary. When we talk about bright, solution-oriented, relentless solution focus and continuous improvement mindset. Relentless solution focus, continuous improvement mindset. Now you could also throw positive into br uh, bright or at least not negative. At minimal, you're avoiding mindless negativity, which is gossiping, complaining, venting, condemning, all those things. At minimum, you're not doing that. So if you're bright, you're at least avoiding those things. And if you're bringing some positive energy, some solution-oriented energy, some uplifting energy, some energy where we're giving others self-esteem by catching them doing things right, that's bright also. So we have brief, bright, Third is back to the future. This is, we are staying out of the archeological digs and this is such a huge time waster. And I see this over and over again in meetings and, and individuals who communicate this way that endlessly talking about the past, what I did, what we did, what the company did, what the numbers were last week, all these things, these things already happened. They already happened. The most successful people focus on what can I do right now in the next five minutes and the future. Where do we want to be in five years? How do we get there? How do we make tomorrow a little bit better than today? This is, a, a, this is absolutely, I see this over and over again. The happiest and most successful organizations are continuously foc focusing on the next five minutes, aka the present, 
and what can they do to make tomorrow better than today? What can they do to have the best year they possibly can? It's just continuous. And then they take action on these ideas. It's not just talk about the future. It's here's a plan, here's a, here's a focus, here's a strategy. This is what we, we're going to do. And they do it, they do it. They stay out of the past, they stay out of the mindless negativity of things that already happened. They stay out of over explaining things and going into archeological digs about a, uh, something that already happened when they can just explain it in 30 seconds. And then you, it takes 30 minutes or three hours to explain something that already happened. And a good leader trains people to get to the point. A good leader cuts people off in these archeological digs and trains them how to communicate in an efficient and effective manner. This is not only good for the organization and the team, this is good for that individual in their everyday life because they have no idea when they're endlessly over explaining things or talking about the past or what they did, what happened, they have no idea how draining that can be on people in their life, on their friends, their family. And it's not a malicious thing for the vast majority of people. They're not doing it. I mean, really, almost everyone. They're not doing it in a malicious way. They're in a malicious manner. Their intentions are not hurtful to endlessly talk about the past. It's just how they've either learned how to communicate. It's how they were, the environment they were raised in. People talked like that. Or they just... It's how they think about and look at the world, but they have no idea why, uh, how frustrating it can be for others, and what a huge time waster it is, not only for them, their team, you know, in their, but their organization as well. So I challenge people to be brief, bright, and back to the future. And if you can communicate in this manner, I challenge you to rate yourself on a scale of one to ten in all these: brief, bright, and back to the future. Focus on for the next thirty to ninety days, whichever one you score the lowest on. If you're not brief, if you tend to be long-winded, focusing on shorting things up. Focus on listening way more than you talk. I challenge people to listen 90% of the time, talk 10%. If you are you score yourself low on the bright in terms of maybe you're mindlessly negative, maybe you're looking at problems too much and dwelling on them and not looking at solutions, focus on improving that one. And if you know that you endlessly go into archaeological digs, right, in terms of communication, focus on that, what the present and what can I do to make tomorrow better than today? This can be life-changing for people. When they get better at these three things, you take a thousand leaders, you will find maybe five that are good at being brief, bright, and back to the future. And it's so simple and it can make you very elite. It can make you respected, admired, and ultra efficient and effective if you follow these three. Let's see. Uh, perfection is the enemy of excellence, and that's exactly what it is. Progress over perfection. We're, we're, we want to look for progress over perfection. Sometimes good enough is good enough. That's one way that you can live faster and follow Parkinson's law. Stop trying to be perfect and start worrying about getting things done. You can always correct them. You can always just get it done and then correct it, make it better. And we'll finish with a quote here <clears throat> from David Schwartz, author of The Magic of Thinking Big. Excellent book on mindset, successful mindset. And he says successful people walk 25% faster than unsuccessful people. I've never substantiated that study. I'm not sure where that came from. It is a, we can take it at its face value or we can take it metaphorically that successful people walk, think, communicate 25% faster than unsuccessful people. If you found this video useful, please click like and subscribe. If you found this video helpful, please share it with someone else that you believe will also find it helpful. Pick yourself up a copy of 1% Warrior Leadership, available now on Amazon.com and my website, CoachAJMadden.com. This is 20 years, the last 20 years of my life poured into this book. Last 20 years of leadership and peak performance, I took the best of the best that I learned and I put it into this book. And it was the book that I wish I had 20 years ago. I wrote it because I wanted it to be supremely useful for leaders, whether they're just starting out on their leadership journey or they're 30 years in, there's something in here. And I believe there's a lot of things in here that you will find useful. I wish everyone success and happiness and I challenge you to live faster in everything that you do.